Hello and welcome back and today we want to do a series of speed tests with the Terramaster TD2. Now this device here is one of the devices that we've talked about on the channel before because Terramaster is a brand that's kind of evolved very very quickly compared with a number of star um, storage brands and you know anywhere in data both NAS and DAS and they've recently in the last year and a half two years invested in the Thunderbolt 3 solutions market presenting you with a bunch of two I think four and five and eight bay Thunderbolt enabled solutions these are direct attached storage drives um, that arrive with Thunderbolt 3 and DisplayPort ports on the rear check out the whole hardware review of this but on top of that they arrive with hardware RAID inside now a number of you are comparing TerraMaster with some of the big 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 top end boys like Lacey, GTEC, that sort of thing because there's a lot of advantages to going for a, a slightly more cost effective brand first and foremost obviously the price for uh, you know with the price of TerraMaster external uh, direct attached storage drives be they the USB variety or Thunderbolt varieties like this the price is often you know 15 20 percent less even at the you know at the release than most of the other brands with constant sales on TerraMaster products on websites like Amazon and Span.com now if you look at the rear of the device you can see those two Thunderbolt ports but really you need to look at the bottom there if I can get the light right and that bottom bit there is our RAID switch. And that's one of the things that kind of puts people off these devices because there's been loads of reviews about it, not just that NAS compares, self-plug, but a lot of them do highlight that switch. The idea of having a physical switch on the back for RAID seems a bit rudimentary. Now, I personally, I don't know what my feelings are about the switch, largely because I do like the TerraMaster product, but there's no avoiding the fact that a physical little dip switch at the rear for selecting your RAID is a little bit 2001 and here we are in 2020 so that's kind of a, an aesthetic, aesthetic blip on my radar if you will but at the same time there's no avoiding the fact that one it has that lower price point two the TerraMaster device arrives unpopulated compared with the majority of other Thunderbolt 3 DAS and RAID enabled solutions that arrive with drives pre-populated you're kind of forced to buy the hard drives or SSD that they select you can make a saving if you happen to be buying those drives but it doesn't guarantee that you're going to make a saving in the long run the last thing that's appealing about it uh, about the TerraMaster brand of devices is simply that because you're not spending as much on them on the outset, it makes it more appealing to introduce it into your workflow, whether you're going to use it as a localized backup device or you're going to be utilizing it for live video editing. And that's what today's video is really about. Today's video is about performance testing this because as much as we might talk about the design, which has improved, or we talk about the price, which is very good, or the rate switch, which is incredibly, you know, a divisive point amongst a lot of buyers, today we want to examine several things. So first and foremost, we want to speed test it. We're hopefully going to use Blackmagic and AJA, try to slip in some Windows transfer in there. We're going to be utilizing three different media types throughout the test. The first test is going to be utilizing Seagate Ironwolf standard drives. So these are standard 4TB Seagate Ironwolf drives, not Pro. These are the standard 5900 RPM, I think 32 megabyte cache, might be 64 meg cache. Um, and we're going to do these two drives in a RAID 0 and then a RAID 1 environment to get those speeds. After that, we're going to do a speed test with IronWolf Pro hard drives. These are a couple of IronWolf Pro hard drives. And these are Seagate IronWolf Pro drives, 14 TB. They've got 256 megabytes of cache, 7200 RPM, enterprise level quality build. And hopefully we will see a significant difference in terms of read and write speed in RAID 0 and RAID 1 compared with the regular hard drives. And the final test is going to be utilising SSD, taking advantage of Seagate's IronWolf SSD series, the 110. Now these almost certainly will give us the fastest speed of all three tests. And that will tell us about what, what the performance you want, what this device can give you with each tier of storage. Standard you know, average speed hard drives, enterprise level hard drives, and enterprise level SSD. Um, now, on top of these tests, I'm also going to be doing another quick test, and I'm not going to spend too much laboring on that point, but we've got USB-C Thunderbolt cables here. You can tell because of the lightning symbol there on the top. 
We're going to be using a Thunderbolt cable, the one that arrives with this to do the speed test with a uh, Windows Pro laptop with an i7 CPU, 16 gig of memory. Um, I'll try and flash those specs on screen. But on top of that, I'm going to use a standard USB-A to USB-C cable. I'm going to connect this Thunderbolt box by a standard USB because a number of you are wondering when you're thinking of investing in storage devices like this, if it's worth investing in a Thunderbolt device now even though you don't have a Thunderbolt system, and therefore later on when you graduate your host system, your PC, your Mac, your whatever, you've got a Thunderbolt system that can give you the good output. So that's what we're going to test as well. We're going to do very brief testing of a USB connection to the TerraMaster TD2. The last thing I'm going to mention before I've been rambling off like five minutes is that these tests are going to be performed in another area of the office over there. And... Once again, because of the draw that Thunderbolt has on most systems, doing speed testing with a Thunderbolt system, you need to have a real high, and we're talking most recent MacBook Pro and higher, or use an external capture card that is recording onto an external device, not even on to the device you're using. So much like uh, the last speed tests I've been doing in the last year or so, these are going to be recorded off camera with a mounted camera pointed at the screen. So I apologize if there's a little bit of blur, but I will be talking there in the background as much as possible to guide you through the whole thing. So without further ado, let's make our way to the other side of the studio, take this bad boy and begin our tests. Right, so here is our setup. We've got the TerraMaster set up with the first selection of drives. <clears throat> Right, so here is our setup. We've got the TerraMaster set up with the drives already pre-installed. I've already begun the formatting of a RAID 1. On top of that, we've got the microphone here, which is pretty large. Unfortunately, this is quite an open area for this test environment, so consequently, sound is going to travel around. But the reason I'm keeping the mic this close is so that you guys can pick up the noise of the device while it's being accessed. Because one of the other common questions that a number of you guys have about the TerraMaster NAS compared with GTEC and Lacey is how much noise does it generate? So throughout this video, we're going to be going the standard drives, the enterprise drives, and the SSD. So you're going to get some idea with this kind of proximity how much noise this device can generate, and whether that's too much or too little for you, because the, ultimately the majority of users are going to be about a meter, maybe two meters away from this because of the length of standard Thunderbolt cables. So without further ado, I'm going to get this set up, bring the tripod into view, uh, so it can see the screen and begin this speed test. Right, so as you can see, I have set up the device for the very first time. If you look on the screen there, and I appreciate screen recording software off camera isn't the best, it's like watching an old rip-off movie on a torrent from the 90s or a VHS you picked up from the pub, but it's just the only way to get true speed test on a system like this. As mentioned, I don't know how well you're going to see this on screen, but I am utilizing a um, Windows Pro system, and that Windows Pro system has an i7 based CPU. That is a 6th generation i7-6600 processor. Hopefully that's apparent on screen. I've made sure the middle of the screen has the sharpest focus. So, um, the device has been set up with those two 4TB drives in a RAID 0 environment. So they've been combined there into a 7452GB uh, RAID 1. So again, let's activate that drive, initialize disk. From there, we will then create a new simple drive for us to perform our speed tests on. We'll just give that the letter D for the hell of it. And we're just going to let that be known as the RAID, RAID 0 4TB HDD. Here we go. I'm sorry if my arm occasionally brushes against the tripod there. Things are a little bit cozy just to make sure you're getting the sound of the mic there um, and the sound of the system. And what I'm going to do is just be quiet for a second after I start the testing. Um, just so, one, we can see the speed test on the screen interrupted, but more appropriately, so that you can hear the device during the speed test. So, this is the two 4TB drives in a RAID 0, as we can see. There we go, they've appeared there. So, let's begin our first test. This first test with Black Magic. It's going to be a 1 gigabyte test file, and it's going to be on our RAID 0 4TB drive. Let's begin the test and keep an ear open for the noise or sound levels of the TerraMaster NAS, uh, TerraMaster DAS even.
So this is with that those two drives in the Raid Zero being accessed. We're getting fairly respectable speeds there. I've got to say, for two drives, normally each one of those drives would give you around 200 meg each. Uh, during the course of this, I should really be making notes. So I'm just going to reach over and get my fantastic notepad and carry on making notes throughout the course of this. But right now, we are seeing the Raid Zero 4TBs coming in at around the mid to late 300s. I'm going to say 350 maxing out on the right, and the read maxing out somewhere not dissimilar. I mean, it's spiking early on, but then going back down. And of course, the level of each one of these tests do get progressively tougher during the random access that Black Magic does give you. But I'm going to say, again, about 350 on average each way, but they are sort of nibbing down maybe 340 if I wanted to be safe. But that is our speed test with Black Magic in that Raid Zero environment. So let's finish that test and now make our way to AJA for the next session of tests. Again, AJA, we're going to go for the Raid Zero there. We're doing a 1080p 1GB test file with 8-bit RJBA. We're going to make sure that disk caching is not enabled. And this is going to be a consistent test of read and write. Let's open up the performance there as well and begin the next stage of testing. So again, we're hitting that 330 again. I, I personally, I know the industry doesn't really agree with me, but I prefer AJA as a speed testing tool over that of Black Magic. Um, I could be doing some of the Atto benchmark tests. I'm not sure if I've got Atto on this system, but Atto I find um, as useful as it can be in Thunderbolt level testing. Atto is much, much better for getting a nice, fast, easy reading of IOPS, really. I mean, I would say even challenges IO meter. And today we are looking just at simple read and writes because a lot of you photo video editors, that's what matters. You're not as bothered by IOPS because you're not dealing with small files. You are dealing with massive files. But I've got to say right now in AJA, we are looking at probably not dissimilar numbers. I would say maybe even a pinch higher. Um, I would say right now we are looking at 360 to 370 on average with that right there. And we can see the performance benchmark there at the bottom. And of course, I will be keeping a record of this. Um, do tune in to NAS Compares to get far more information uh, later down the line. But for now, we're looking again. I'm going to say 350, 360 on average there for those two. But we are starting to see that number depreciate to the 330s and 340s over time. So that may be something we're going to have to look at um, just sort of looking at overall as we go. So we've now done our um, RAID 1 tests using AJA and Black Magic, so we're going to cease those. Now, I know you're not going to see this on camera, but now I'm going to turn this device into a RAID 1. In fact, do you know what I'll try to do? I'm going to try to bring the camera into view so you can see how I make the switch to a RAID one environment. If I turn the device around, I'm going to have to rotate the camera so you can see this. And we're going to look at the device itself. Perhaps I won't kick the tripod as I do it. So as you can see there at the bottom, there is, if we remove that power cable out of the way, we have got our RAID switch. And right now, that RAID is pointing upwards to RAID 0. So in order to switch this system to a RAID 1, we have to rotate this dial to point at RAID 1. And then we hold this pin into the reset port for 5 seconds. Now while I do that, what I'm going to do is rotate the device back round so you can see the lights. Because the lights are what's important here because this will show us that the reset has taken place. So now I'm going to hold the reset. Two, three, four, five. And as you can see, these lights have now switched red while it's now converting to the new RAID level because there's no data needing rewriting. As we can see, it's now made the switch into a RAID 1 environment. So if I move this device back to where it was, move the laptop back in place, then we get everything set up for the next test. I could skip forward 
but I'm not going to on this one occasion. Later in the video, I will skip all this, but I just want to show you guys a little bit of the methodology. So we'll make our way back to that screen. And again, I appreciate that this is incredibly Blair Witch Project. So let's get that set up there. And as we can see, the drive we created earlier is now gone. Even though the Thunderbolt external RAID is still connected, it's still very much on screen. So for now, we make our way back into the management console. And how well can we see that on screen? Hopefully, the middle of the screen is showing that. If we zoom in a little bit there, you can see that now we're looking at a single storage area of 3,726 uh, gigabytes or four terabytes commercially. So now the RAID one has been completed. So once again, let's initialize our disk. Let's make our way back in. Create the simple volume once again. And again, I will skip these steps in a future test as we go forward. And again, I'm going to mount it on D. So again, this is going to be a RAID 1 for TB. Skip forward. And now that drive is being formatted quickly and is now available. So if we make our way back, there's our new 4TB drive in a RAID 1 environment. So let's get ready to do the next stage of testing. So let's go back into Blackmagic, one gig test file. We're going to select the target drive again. We're going to make sure we select our RAID 1 for TB area of storage. And we're going to start the test once again. So straight away, that is a lesser speed than I thought we'd have got from um, initialization. What we seemingly seem to be looking at is a, a, effectively a one drive speed. Now we knew that a RAID 0 environment would give us higher speeds than a RAID 1. But even a RAID 1, I would have expected higher speeds than what we're seeing on screen right now. Um, it's worth checking that those drives have, the format has been completed. And I can tell you right now that the format has been completed because if we stop accessing these drives, the green lights stay solid without any action happening inside. But right now in a RAID 1 environment on Black Magic, we seemingly seem to be seeing around 180, maybe even, you know, maybe pipping that, but I think we're gonna have to say 180 for right and we're going to have to say, again, maybe even 175, 180 for read. So again, lesser, that's definitely less than I expected. But of course, the next test we want to perform is AJA. And that will give us some idea about just how authentic these results are. But once again, I'm just going to pause for a brief second so you guys can hear the device in operation from a distance of around about 50 centimetres. Okay, so now I'm going to make the switch over to AJA for the next area of test. So let's open up AJA, let's close Black Magic. Once again, we can see it's already pre selected that D drive because we're using the same mapped drive letter. So we've got the RAID 1 at 4TB, we have got 1 gigabit test file, everything's exactly the same. And once again, disk caching is not enabled. Let's open up the log there at the bottom and begin the next stage of testing. So again, we are still capping at that 1.7 uh, mark. Read seems to spike a little higher, but still not dramatically higher overall. And even though we're doing our mad Blair Witch project over shoulder camera recording, there's still no denying that these speeds present on screen aren't fantastic for a RAID 1 there, because a lot of users are gonna utilize this device in a RAID 1 environment. But for now, let's wrap things up on the testing of standard drives and make our way over to the enterprise level drives. Right, so I'm just finishing the initialization of setting up the two 14TB Pro Series drives in a RAID 0 environment. So we are looking at a huge amount of storage there for us to play with. But let's carry on there. We'll get those drives sorted out there. And as you can see, there's 26,000 gigabytes there, which is pretty nice, let's be honest, 26,077.95 gigabytes. 
currently available there and there's our drive there so let's start with the next stage of testing there's black magic on screen and again i will try to keep a little quiet at the beginning of the test just so we can test the audio level at 50 centimeters between us uh, the microphone and the device but i can tell you right now there's a lot more clunking from enterprise level drives we can't really have a go at the terra master for that it is just because more enterprise level drives make more noise because the higher rpm the more enterprise level construction and just more work going on but let's carry on and start the test so straight away we're hitting 386 straight off the bat lovely stuff there and 390 at read so let's begin making notes on this test and I'm going to be quiet now during the test. Well the read numbers are getting fantastic right now. We're looking at 450 to 460 megs and we're going into the 400 megabytes write territory very very early on I've got to say unsurprisingly we are getting better figures overall uh, from the enterprise level drives but we kind of saw that coming as i'm um, hopefully on screen there you can make out a number of the more enterprise level file format and file types that we're testing overall as it runs through its different test spectrum but Overall, we can see right now that those numbers are certainly superior on those enterprise level drives. Whether you think that's noticeably better is up to you, and maybe in a RAID 5 environment or a bigger chassis, the difference between the standard and the pro would be even larger in that margin. But let's stop testing there and then make our way back to AJA for the next period of testing. Let's get that up there. Again, one gigabyte test file, 1080p, 14TB, RAID 0, let's begin the test this caching not enabled i have to keep showing that just to make it abundantly clear not enabled and let's begin the aja test so again we're straight into the 400s um off the bat and we can carry on and again i'm going to be a little quiet now whilst we hear the drive pretty good numbers gotta say and the noise isn't quite as high as i anticipated it being i thought it would be a little bit noisy than this while testing those enterprise level drives so i've got to say a bit, a bit impressed there but for now what i'm going to do is stop this test and then convert this system now into a raid one environment but at the moment we're looking at around 400 to 410 um, averaging on the right and well above four 60 maybe even 465 averaging on that read speed but for now let's change these drives now over to a raid 1 environment so we've set up our raid 1 environment and again that's 14 tb raid 1 or 13,038.95 gigabytes we've set that up there's the RAID 1 drive there of the two 14TB Enterprise drives. So now we're going to make our way back into Blackmagic. Double check that drive, 1 gigabyte, target drive, 14TB, making sure we're not selecting my local SSD. And let's begin the test. And again, I'll keep the noise down just a little bit, just so we can hear the system whilst it's working. So again, that RAID 1 is presenting us with lower speed, somewhere around 195 to 200 megabytes per second for the right, luckily in excess of 225 to 230, averaging from what I'm seeing on that read. We can have a look um, at the historical readings there in the background, and they kind of tell, kind of tell us exactly the same thing. But again, I'm, I'm still very, very surprised that the RAID 1 is dipping in this fashion. I would have assumed that a RAID 1 would at least got a little bit closer to a RAID 0, because even though a RAID 0 would certainly be superior, in a RAID 1 environment, and particularly with a hardware RAID enabled RAID 1 environment, one would expect that both drives being read and written um, to and from at exactly the same time would still be 
impressive enough that we would see speeds in excess of what we're seeing here. But this isn't the end of it. Let's make our way over to Black Magic for the next ses session. Make our way here to, uh, not Black Magic, to AJA. Again, one 14 TB RAID 1, 1 gig test file, open up the bench testing, and again, disk caching disabled. And make our way in and begin the next stage of testing. So, straight away, it is kind of immediately going over that 200 megabytes a second, which is still great, but would have hoped for more, would certainly have hoped for more in a RAID 1 environment, given the majority of users are going to utilize this device in a RAID 1. Don't get me wrong, RAID 1 does lose you a tremendous amount of storage space, 50%, to be honest, of all the maximum capacity you put inside, but it's about safety, and I know you photo video editors care a great deal about that kind of stuff, and I can't blame you for that. But what I'm going to do now is wrap things up on the hard drive testing, and we're now going to make our way over to the SSD testing to find out how the Seagate Iron Wolf 110s um, and that lovely NAND flash inside, what results we're going to get from these two drives in a RAID 0 and a RAID 1 environment. And then finally at the end, we are going to do that test of a USB connection on this device using those SSDs at the end. In fact, let's do a quick test now while we've got the device connected so we can see a difference between both USB and Thunderbolt connectivity. So for now, we're going to disconnect the Thunderbolt connection. Actually, let's do it safely. You know, safety first, let's have a go. So we're going to safely disconnect. Um, we're going to eject that drive. It's then going to disconnect our 14 TB rated drive. And then from there, once it disappears, we'll be able to remove the Thunderbolt connection and get our USB connection connected. So as you can see, this is our USB 3 um, A to USB C cable. We're going to connect this to a USB port and we're going to connect this via USB. So here we go. It's already suggesting that this Thunderbolt device may have limited utilization because we're not using a Thunderbolt cable. And I can tell you right now, that the Thunderbolt device, unlike when I connected it with Thunderbolt cables, it hasn't automatically booted. So for now, it is now spinning up, because I pressed the power button, but for now, let's move the laptop more into shot. Let's have a look. Now you can hear those drives at boot. They are definitely a noisier pair of drives there. I'm gonna let the device boot up and initialize in its own speed. And again, I'm not going to skip forward on this. We want to see exactly how this device works with a USB connection. Going through there, let's uh, sharpen that focus a tiny bit there. And the device is still spinning up, but I fear we don't have sufficient power to warrant this connection. Because right now the device is still showing me red lights on the hard drive port. And I do fear that this is not going to be supporting standard USB connection. We'll give it another 30 to 60 seconds, but apart from that, we may have to give up the ghost on this one. It's looking increasingly unlikely. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap things up on that USB connection, and we're gonna make our way over to those SSDs via a Thunderbolt connection. But unfortunately, we're gonna to have to call it that the USB connectivity is not sufficient for stable data storage. Let's fast forward to the RAID 0 of those SSDs over Thunderbolt. Right, so we've done our RAID 0 on those two enterprise level Ironwolf Pro 110 SSDs. I think they're 1.82 giga uh, terabytes each. Um, so we've got a combined total of 3.49 terabytes. And without further ado, let's get the Black Magic Speed Test, the final uh, round of the test on the RAID zeros at least, up and running. So we've got the uh, one gigabyte test file. We have got our RAID zero SSD of Iron Wolf SSD. And let's get the test begun. And again, I'll be quiet during this because right now the only noise you're really gonna hear is the system itself because the SSDs don't actually generate uh, they generate little or no noise. So let's start and have a good listen.
So this should give you some idea about what the device can do with those SSDs. And here is where we see a true test of this device's metal. Because right now we've got two SSDs that purport to give four to 500 megabytes per second of traditional read-write. And in a RAID 0 environment, we see that combination together. So as you can see immediately, the write speeds are already well in excess of 400, call it 430 to 440 uh, in the later stages of this testing so far. But it's with the read speed that we're seeing some real fluctuation. We're seeing it go as high as six and 700 and then come down at some of the other varied tests of the different file types um, um, coming down to around 500. At the moment, I would probably say, just based on what I'm seeing, that we're seeing an average of around 600 to 650, but with more prolonged testing, more than likely we'd see a number a bit higher than that. So for now, I'm gonna make that note there. And as you can tell from the noise, we now get an idea of what the noise of this device is like when it's just the device functioning. Let's have a listen again. So again, that is at 50 centimeters difference. So again, we'll stop that test there and now we'll make our way into AJA. And then from AJA, we should get a little bit more of a pinpoint accuracy. There's our RAID 0 SSDs, our one gig test file at 1080p. Once again, disk caching not enabled, although on SSDs, that's an interesting concept. And let's carry on with the AJA testing. So again, we're getting great speed there. We're hitting that 440, maybe even 450 at times there, but although it is slightly coming down at further stages of the testing. And this is where we start to see the ever so slight limitations of this device compared with GTEC and Lacey. You do tend to get slightly higher read-write operations typically because of the components being used inside and the controller. And this is where a little bit of the economy lies. Also with these systems, the hardware RAID inside is still working very, very hard. These are better speeds than you would get in most cases if you were utilizing um, a software RAID device where your system, like your laptop or your PC, is going to be taking advantage uh, and handling all of the RAID levels. But for now, we're looking at speeds there of well in excess of 420-430 and read speeds are now climbing up into the 700s. So again, I'm going to classify that again around 680 to 700 for that read. And we're going to move on to the final stage of the testing with this disc in a RAID 1 environment. And now we're on to the final stage of our testing. We've got the SSDs in the RAID 1 environment, so let's get Blackmagic up and running for the concluding session of tests. Now again, if this is anything to go by compared with our other RAID 1 tests on this box, we are going to see speeds somewhere around the 60% mark of those that we saw of the RAID 1. Uh, the RAID 0, I should say. But let's get started. And again, I'm going to be a little bit quiet at the beginning just so we can get some idea about the noise being generated by the device. So we've got, you know, we've got the device making about as much noise as it did before. I will say that at this proximity, we are, you know, barely hearing it at all. So if you are going to install SSDs inside this device, you aren't going to hear it. But in terms of read and write, unsurprisingly, just like with our other RAID 1 test on the TerraMaster TD2, uh, we are seeing reads much, much higher, of course. We're seeing it um, exceed that five, even 600 megs in places. And with the write only just pipping the 200 mark, somewhere in the teens, maybe on average, I think we're going to be looking at somewhere between 210 to 215. But the read and writes there are kind of indicative of the other read and write test that we saw earlier on. And as kind of lightly touched on, there are ways of getting better read and write speeds typically with external enclosures. But you have to do a lot of stuff with mucking around with block sizes as well as using caching locally. And although these are options to a number of content creators out there, they're not typical of use. And I didn't think it would be very fair to introduce those into our speed tests. So if we move away, from Black Magic for the RAID 1 test. Let's go into the final instance of AJA here. Once again, we've got our RAID 1, we've got the um, codec type there, we've got a one gigabit, uh, one gigabyte test file, and we've got caching disabled. So let's open up that menu. 
And again, a little quiet at the beginning. So straight away, we're looking at the 200 megs again. We've immediately exceeded 700 megabytes per second right on the initial uh, run, which is pretty good. Let's see how that stands up consistently, because it seems the first three rotations there on RAID have exceeded 700, which is great in a RAID 1 environment, because both drives are being read from at the same time. But it's write that concerns us the most here. So for those that are going to be accessing archives of storage, read is fantastic stuff. But if you're going to be editing files directly on the device, write there is a little bit disappointing for a couple of SSDs in a RAID 1 environment when you're writing to two disks simultaneously. Yes, uh, the device is running the hardware RAID. So obviously my own system, if we open up the task manager, we're going to be able to see that utilization during this is not going to have been breathtaking. Like right now, we can look at the utilization here. And again, it's going to be a little faint for you guys on screen, I think. But if I read it out to you right now, we can see CPU utilization is already at 39%. So even with an external hardware RAID, CPU utilization is already pretty high. Same goes for disk utilization with the fact that the D disk, which is our external disk, is clearly being utilized to its full capacity and memory utilization at 31%. We're looking at different figures there, but what's gonna be interesting, just to wrap things up, is when I finish this test, what happens to these figures? So we've established uh, a write speed of, uh, it's somewhere in the 200 teens, 215, 220, and the read consistently over 700 megabytes, which is great news. But if we cease that test, now we can have a look at how not having the device running is affecting our overall system we can have a look at how our system behaved. So straight away with CPU utilization, it doubled the amount of CPU utilization uh, than when the device wasn't being accessed. Memory utilization has remained exactly the same. And as we can see, disk utilization, because we're not accessing the disk, is zero. But the evidence is there. Even though the device is connected via that device the speed test has definitely taken a toll on the cpu nowhere near full and it's only utilization this you know this is comparable these stats within the system itself but looking at those spikes there and the way they've dipped down at the end of the test that's kind of a clear indication now just before we go i'm going to do a very very quick windows drop test all we're going to do is go grab a bunch of data so let's go in here and maybe grab some mp4s from you know my backup archive here. So we're just gonna grab some localized files off my internal SSD, some big old MP4 files, and we're just gonna grab a big chunk of them. Uh, these are my backups of the previous tests that we've been doing. Gonna copy those and copy those into these big files into here. And we're gonna have a look at the speed it gives us. So we're looking at around about 186, 185 um, megabytes per second there. So Again, even a Windows drop seems to be giving us the same speed that we were looking at previously with um, the speed test and what it was giving us. Yes, we're using a single SSD in my system, but with these big files at 185, each of them well in excess of a gigabyte, and CPU utilization going bananas throughout, there's no avoiding the fact that the TerraMaster um, Thunderbolt RAID still utilizes a lot of your CPU um, power, but you still utilize CPU power even on a software RAID device, so it's very hard to give an advantage one way or the other. The hardware RAID has not performed the way I would have liked, but it's still not terrible, and I would still advise this device to those that need fast, cost-effective Thunderbolt storage nevertheless. If you're interested in learning more, go to the NAS Compare article in the description, as well as buying the device from Span.com or Amazon via the links in the description to support this channel and to make sure that you get the best solution possible. Click like if you've enjoyed this video, click subscribe to learn more about Thunderbolt DAS and RAID storage, and of course, I'll see you next time.